IL. As you can see, there's about three days left on this wacky pack that we got here. It ended up being here for two weeks. I don't know if that's going to be standard or not, but that's what we got this time. And as everybody knows, there's a ton of exclusive token achievements that you can only get in the wacky pack. So you gotta really know what you're doing to try to get some of these tokens. Now I've gotten a few of them, I think four now in total. So we're gonna do a, a couple game reviews, try to see what strategies work, what's the best way, the most consistent way to get these token achievements. And we're just gonna run through, hopefully learn something, hopefully in these next three days, this video can help you all get some more tokens. And if you have any other suggestions, please drop it in the chat, let us know. Maybe it'll help me out to get a few final ones. Maybe it'll help other homies out in the in the community here. I'll be honest, I've tried doing the weekly pack this week and it's just not fun at all. I can't get anything to work. It's just, I don't know what it is. It just doesn't vibe with me. So we're not doing a weekly this week. I, it's unless something else comes up, it's, this weekly is dead to me. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It just doesn't work. So full disclosure here, all of these videos were recorded prior to me voicing over them. Uh, the reason being that this this wacky pack is very grindy. So you could play perfectly and there's no guarantee that you're going to get a specific achievement. So for that reason, uh, I, I figured it, it's easiest to just not worry about getting these guys cooking up uh, live, we'll say. <laughs> so. We sped up the gameplay here a little bit. We're really just looking for like trends, trying to help out anybody that's having trouble getting some of these achievements and stuff. We're going pretty quick here, but what we're seeing here is essentially you're trying to get a really strong early game and ideally you get your token pretty early too. There are ways late game to like pivot into tokens. What I've noticed is that most people don't have tokens late game. I don't know why it just for the most part, you see them early game, probably because they're not as strong. So it's rare for token teams to get farther. But yeah, so if you end up running, just trying to get to like late game and do a sort of Quetzalcoatl, um, some sort of pivot into a token pet, you can either lose and steal their token, or you can get an anglerfish, try to steal if they already have one on their team. So yeah, it's kind of hit or miss. Um, definitely wouldn't recommend that as the primary method, just trying to get to late game and steal a token, because like I said, they're not super common. So what we really need to do is try to target one early game. So what, we're, what we got here is this dirty rat. Now having him in the back guarantees that the first level you lose, you're offered a dirty rat, which is a very good way to get him. So we basically just have there, have him there as a kind of catch-all of sorts. So he's well statted, he's going to get us some wins probably. And as soon as he doesn't, we're not even mad because then we get our own dirty rat, right? So that's the idea here. So we're just going to cook on through, trying to scale up our team, get a super powerful mid-game scaling comp going. So Ox is very good. Weasel, I think, is one of the best for this kind of thing, because you're going to be underpowered. Just Comparing apples to apples here, you're going to be less powerful than a non-token team, just by nature of the game. So what you need to do is you need a lot of economy so that you can scale up super quickly with the likes of a cow, a bro, something like that. And then you can basically offset, if you will, the, the effects of having this token on your team. So that's the idea in a nutshell. We're, right now we're, we're looking for this dirty rat here. And if we can get this weasel to level three, and then once we get to tier six, we'll give him a mushroom, and then we're just cooking. So then you get six gold every turn, guaranteed for the most part, because he's in the front there. And that, that gets you most of the way there, to be honest. And then it's just a matter of, can you get lucky enough to run a few, I don't know, a few waffles, try to get enough cows, enough bros to get it cooking. But I mean, so far, it's been pretty successful. So what we got here, if we start looking at the actual game here, so this guy has a cracked egg. Um, the Falcon, <laughs> I'm sure if you've played this at all, you're well aware. Falcon is very strong, arguably the strongest pet in the pack. And it's kind of unfortunate because it's so oppressive. You kind of have to run a Falcon unless you just straight up get enough stats that it doesn't matter and you can one shot him. But for the most part, if you just dump a ton of stats to your Falcon, 
you're gonna be pretty well off. We did get a flashlight here, so that, that's gonna help out significantly. Okay, fantastic. And then, so you can kind of see why the falcon is so good here. Because you can steal weasels, get extra economy. You can steal their nialas. You can get a whole bunch of trumpets just from that. And now we can do this kind of fun little double cyclops action here. I like that. And then, so Quetzalcoatl is typically what you're going to need to get this, this token working. And it might seem kind of weird to buy the Emperor Tamarin here. But the idea is that we're right in line with where we're going to get a ton of scaling coming from. Ooh, and we are going to get our Dirty Rat set up. Fantastic. So, so yeah, you're, you're basically... We're right on par with where we're going to find scaling. So the best way that we can get... And it's not really working out here because we ended up getting Dirty Rat when you level them up. But in theory, the idea is you get... You get the, the Emperor Tamarin, the Quetzalcoatl just levels it up super easily, and then you start stacking some bros, you start stacking some cows, you know what I'm saying? Trying to get those stats up, and then you can just sell into a token very easily, and then you're good. We did finally get the level 3 on the Weasel. Looking fantastic. Oh yeah, dude, we're cooking. But yeah, so that's one thing we'll see in one of the one of the later games here. Just running a Tamarind from early game. Stat him up. You don't feel bad statting up a Tamarind, obviously. Um, I don't think they have anything from the Anglerfish that we would want. Uh, and then you can just sell it. One to one. As soon as you pivot into a, into a token, it works out really well. It turned out that we lost immediately, so we didn't need to do that. But that was the idea. Is you get a little extra stats on your token. Make him more useful than... He otherwise would be. You're essentially just swapping the Tamarind for the token. But yeah, with the Quetzalcoatl, you can guarantee that you're going to get your homie up to full level 3. And yeah, this is going to be gonna be easy makings here. So now we got 3 hearts, 9 wins. So here's the tough part, right? We want to run waffles on this homie, but... Oh, okay, this is perfect. So we gotta get level 3. We're not gonna sell a Quetzalcoatl until we guarantee that we can get a chocolate, which we did find. But ideally you want to be running the Highland Cow. Because if you can get Highland Cow level 3, 50 health, that's just a 50-50 a on top of the Highland Cow. It's incredible. It's very powerful. And we are gonna lose this one. Not entirely surprising, to be honest. We do find a Golden. We're not gonna need him though. We already have our team. So right now we're looking for Highland Cow level ups, we're looking for waffles, we're looking for bros. That's basically all we're doing. Um, but yeah, if you can get a 50-50, um, or 50 health Highland Cow, you're going to be good. You're going to be so sad. It's hard to lose, to be honest. Um, okay. And this, we got this little juggle action. So if we do end up losing, which I think we might with a 32-32, yeah, we're going to have a ton of gold to try to seal the deal here. Uh, again, we don't need either of these. But yeah, right now we're looking for bros, we're looking for waffles. We get very lucky with a double waffle setup. Um, keep going. Somehow, we clutch out a level 3 Highland Cow. So we're gonna have a 27-27 golden coming up here. Now the big question is, can we deal with their Falcons? And it looks like we're going to do a little pass around here, but it's going to line up just perfectly. We don't even need the dog, which is fantastic. And we get it. That's all it takes. Not too shabby. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so we've gone through the basic structure of how we want to do it. So now we're just going to kind of fast pace, run through the game, run through what I'm thinking at the time. More of a typical kind of setup that we normally do in a video. Um, what you just saw there is what I've been trying to do unsuccessfully up to this point is on the very first turn you throw in a basilisk to guarantee that you get a rock and then it you try to survive and win after basically passing on the first turn is it's a tough strategy but it's a guaranteed rock 
for the most part in the beginning if you only run the one basilisk so there's that uh try it if you want let me know if it works for you it hasn't for me so far but you know i'm sure it can the other option is you own a cockatrice and hope they have a level one in the back and then you lose to that team but that's kind of a tough you know probably not gonna work kind of situation and yeah, you can really see here just how powerful this ox is early game. If you can get an ox and give him a few attack, it's you're, you're cooking. <laughs> it's hard to, to lose early game when you have the ox here. The only problem is he doesn't scale that well into late game. Because you can get melons on homies. So it's, like, it's basically just a melon unit that doesn't do anything. Like who cares about the one extra attack whenever something dies in front of him? We are going to see some fantastic trading here by the Ox, as usual. And yeah, so I mean at this point, we don't really know who, which token we're going for. We get an early Falcon, which is, you know, depending who you ask, <laughs> it could be considered a guaranteed win. Um, not necessarily, but if you can get enough scaling to support it, dude, the Falcons just go insane. We're getting another nice little one-two punch going on here. I always love having layers on the team. I'm sure I've said this before, but when you have, you know, you have the Ox Melons here, you have the Turtle Melon. And then you also have this kind of summons, you know, cleanup kind of build with the Falcon. It just feels so good. You know, it feels like they really have to just trudge through the team, really grind through everything. It's not like they're getting some cheap win here and there, you know what I'm saying? So it works out very well for us here. And now I think we sell the food dog here. Lasagnas are very good with the Falcon. It'll just refresh the, the puppy toy here. And we might as well do a little bit of this. We're going to start getting the manatees statting up our falcon. And we'll just, while we have three gold, throw the gingerbread on the, on the weasel. Start getting a little extra gold per turn. Now here's where we get a little trouble. Not too bad, we draw. It, the, all of the, the, the only thing here... The main decision on whether you win a battle or not is whether your Falcon has good breakpoints with the enemy team, enemy Falcon, or just enemy team in general. If your Falcon is just a little bit stronger than the enemy team, you win. And if he's a little bit weaker, you get absolutely slaughtered. It's just kind of how it works, right? Like in this case, there's two Falcons, but we line it up such that we don't, we don't lose due to the Falcons kind of passing this ox back and forth, you know? So that helped us out a little bit there. Our Falcon was weaker, but it lined up so that it didn't really matter. So now you can see I'm kind of, I'm considering getting rid of this ox here. Because we're not getting any scaling into him. I would rather get this Highland Cow started up. He's going to do a lot more for us. And we do find the level up here. There's the Cockatrice. We're gonna jump over here real quick and see if we have the rock yet. Spoiler alert, we do not have the rock. The big question though is where do you put it, right? So you could get rid of a swan if you want to, you know, only have the, the gold generation from your weasel. But realistically, so we move it over. We're not sure if we're getting rid of the highland cow or the swan yet. So we're just gonna kind of hedge our bets here a little bit. And see, you can you can see just how powerful it is getting the Falcon onto Niala when your Falcon's level two or three. It's just so many trumpets, you know. But we do end up running. We actually get rid of the manatee. But we're not going to have the scaling from the from the manatee anymore. He was only level one, so it was you know less than a pair per turn. Nothing insane, but we do find some bros. Which is going to do very well for us here. And we... Okay, so if we lose this one, we will end up getting the rock. And I think... No, we don't lose. So this is the idea, right? We're trying to get a loss where we 
can get the rock stolen, you know, and we actually find a third bro, which is insane. Now that would have been a very good turn to pivot into the the rock, but unfortunately we won. Weird statement. Um, but yeah, so we do find the Quetzalcoatls. Can we find some cows? We might be pivoting away from the bro here. We'll have to see. But yeah, our team is just too strong. <laughs> we can't lose. So here I'm a little bit worried because we're on nine wins, five hearts, and we have no token whatsoever. So what I'm going to do here is just kind of throw some help from the cow onto this Highland cow. Really try to speed run getting him scaled up here. And we find some more bros. Now I kind of wish we kept the bros, but so be it. So we're hoping we hit, well actually we're guaranteed to hit the, the weasel here. Okay, we do find a, a, a cockatrice landing on the rock here. And we do lose, so this is good. We can actually choose um, between the butterfly and the, the rock here. But we're actually going to take the butterfly, because I think butterfly is less likely. Rock, you can kind of make it happen um, if, you're, if you're good, <laughs> you know. A big if for for me but so this is very good if we can get a chocolate that would be huge okay huge we're gonna throw the chocolate onto the butterfly just in case we do win here we want to make sure that we have the level three ready not that we're fully expecting to win and we actually get slaughtered here but just in case we go against some weird team and yeah so you can see right now <laughs> this is we have plenty of gold, plenty of blue ring octopus. This really shouldn't be a problem. The only thing we're missing right now is getting this Highland Cow up to level 3. And then it's basically guaranteed, assuming we find just a few more waffles. So let's see here how this is going to go. I think we are going to lose this one. We got a an unfortunate toilet paper hit on our falcon. And another blue ring octopus. So now we're looking for waffles. We're looking for island cows. Any of those would be fantastic. Not really seeing much. And you could argue that like, hey, maybe you should start running pairs, you know? But I don't think it's actually worth it to run pairs here. The reason being, and this is kind of fun, when you, when you kill one of the salmon, they summon and then they <laughs> do the snipes back and forth. And we do get the dub here. Um, I, I don't remember what I was saying. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The reason why I wouldn't run pairs in this instance is you can get waffles. And waffles are just so much better. The last one we're going to be getting here is the cracked egg. Now, this one is kind of a strange, uh, <laughs> strange token. Because it's the only one that, that popped up in the very beginning. Aside from the rock basilisk combo, but you very rarely end the game with the rock pet existing. They're usually in the very front. So uh, oftentimes people will run a sneaky egg, toss it in the very back of their team, like Johnny Dollar did here. Just so that if you do win, then the opponent is able to go for the sneaky egg achievement. That was nice. Uh, or cracked egg achievement, I suppose. So we're going to be setting up the, the cracked egg here. Get a little extra health. We got an early ox, which again is a very good way to do it. And we get get a little attack, a little bit of health, a little apple. This is a solid team here. So now we're kind of just going, playing it as normal. Doing as much as we physically can to try to get this win here. So we're going through, trying to speed run a lot of early wins. Because that's really with the ox especially where you're going to make your bread, if you will. And I don't think we keep the dromedary here. The reason being, we kind of have our pets scaling already. So when we level up here, we're not really going to want to just sit there with the shop frozen and let him level. If we had multiple dromedaries, that's another story, but we don't. We're going to build the ant in front of the ox, make sure he gets a little extra boost there. And then manatee is honestly a really solid way to start here. And we'll roll again, make sure anteater is actually our best option, which it is, given the other three pets. Now I have seen a lot of people running a, 
putting a badger up front. Is a huge badger, sometimes a strawberry and a pelican, you know, and it nukes people and then nukes the pelican, which is already low statted, and then it pops out as a big salmon. Pretty solid strategy, actually. I would recommend it, especially if you're having trouble keeping pets from early game into late game. I think it can be very solid. What you see here is we pilled the anteater instead of selling him. It gives you one extra gold because you pill it for one, but you sell the level three for three gold. So it ends up being net one extra gold over just selling it for one because you get two gold from, from selling the ant. And we're having a little bit, I think there's too many people hanging out on the waggy pack. <laughs> so we're having trouble connecting here. But it does eventually connect back up and this is multiplied speed so we were waiting here for a little while but the way that we're setting up here is try to get this ox scaled up crazy fast try to get the swan a bunch of attacks so it's not completely useless and then the best way that i've found to make these teams work is to have three core pets and three or two flex spots so right now the mantee and the puppy are our flex spots those at a moment's notice we can just get rid of throw them out and get get us something else cooking usually going to be a cow and or a blue ringed octopus but it doesn't have to be so what we're going to do here we're actually going to i think we level unless we set up the, the swan here but now we get a dealer's choice you can have a bro or a cow personally i think the cow is stronger um in a in a vacuum because or not in a vacuum <laughs> the cow is stronger in my opinion primarily because it helps so much to have one big unit in this weekly if you can get everyone big don't get me wrong it's not too bad and we actually goofed up that order a little bit should have put the swan on first to get the extra health before we did the, the lasagna but yeah so if you can get one pet really big with the likes of a cow. It's just gonna nuke everything for the most part. Now, of course, you can see the likes of a butterfly, in which case you'd rather have a bro, but I didn't say it works all the time. I said it's most consistent in my experience. So we're gonna get a little extra health onto the swan here, trying to get him <laughs> slightly more useful. And right here, we're kind of committing a little bit to the cow if we put a chocolate on him. What we're actually going to end up doing is throwing the Quetzalcoatl here. And the idea here is that we can just have this flex spot while we're just kind of low key scaling here. Just use the flex spot as a way to, to get some levels on our homies. We've got a lot of level or a lot of tier three or lower pets in the, the ox, swan and sneaky egg, cracked egg. So there's a lot of levels we got to get here. And we're gonna need a lot of a lot of good luck to get these get these scaled up in time. You can see we're actually considering running a, a level two Quetzalcoatl, just because there's so many levels that we have to pull off here. But we've got five now four hearts to do it. It's definitely doable. So what we'll do here, we're gonna run the level two Quetzalcoatl, hold these cows knowing that you know there's a decent chance that we can get the cows cooking um, if we can get a few stockpiled here it can help us give a give us a little jump here prior to our full pivot and you can actually see he's got a a seagull mushroom with a mammoth up front which is just a fantastic kind of setup i love it and fortunately actually we did get the the both Quetzalcoatl hits on our cracked egg, which is fantastic. Um, so we're going to roll here, look for the pill. We got it immediately, which is super lucky. Obviously pill in front of the ox, as usual. And now we're full committing for the cow here. This is the best way I think that we can do it, is just get a nice big swan cooking up here. But let's be real, the ox is already kind of there. We don't really need more ox scaling, especially when it's still got the manatee behind him. 
I'm thinking after this though, I believe we switch over to scale up the swan with the manatee. Because the swan needs the more... Or no, we're actually scaling the cracked egg. Because the ox has enough attack. We just need to get its health up and that'll be... That'll come with the cow, for sure. We do get a waffle on our last possible roll this turn. That's huge. And yeah, so we'll just get... We need one more cow milk to get... To get you cooking. So we get kind of an unfortunate breakpoint here, but it does work out okay. Um, we end up losing here, which is fine, but we're getting close, right? So I'm not too worried at this point because we're getting close. We have our level three cracked egg. We're only going up from here. So really, we're just looking for cows. We're looking for waffles. Um, I'm considering the anglerfish here in case we go against a bro team. We could try to stack them, you know, but end up just saying, hey, let's stick with the cow. We already have the level two. All we gotta do is find cows, gotta find waffles, and then we're cooking. So we do pivot the manatee back over to the swan here. Now they have a pretty strong setup here, especially with this butterfly in the back. I already have the butterfly achievement, so we're not really worried about him right now. And yeah, so now we're just looking for the swan. We're getting a little nervous at this point um, because <laughs> we're, We've lost three in a row now, and we're trying to make sure that we don't just straight up lose this opportunity. And we're going to hold the Niala here. It's going to make it slightly less likely to get this, this cow going, um, to find the last cow. But it'll be a potentially stronger pivot later, or it could pivot into some homies. But we end up finding here, we're much stronger than this team. We get to nine wins. That's a, a huge sigh of relief. So we can actually get the Niala next to the cow. We ignore our other homie here. And then we get one more waffle. And at this point, it's like, okay, we've gotten a ton of scaling on three of our homies here. We've got a Niala. If we lose here, we still have the Niala play where we can get a little stronger. Um, but I mean, yeah, we're, we're not gonna lose. These guys are too strong. We end up clutching it out here for our final achievement for the video. We get that level three cracked egg. So that's basically the methodology.